Hello everyone, it's Farm Sim Guy here. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to a brand new series. Now, um, I came up with the idea for this series while I was on my way back from a very fun time at PAX in Boston. And I got to thinking that, you know, over the years, farming has changed so, so much that uh, wouldn't it be nice to be able to kind of have a look back over those previous eras the old machinery and so on and so forth and then slowly gradually bring it up to the present day so this is my new series we're going to take it over i don't know how many seasons yet but we're going to keep pushing it for as long as it takes to get to where we need to get it to and i hope you enjoy the ride i'll fill you in a little bit more on what i'm thinking in terms of kind of the idea behind it as we get stuck into some work but for now welcome to fs22 Generations. So here we are on our little small holding out in the wilds of Edgewater, Saskatchewan. And what we've got here is our own cow barn over there. We don't have any cows yet, but they are to come very soon. We are starting this series in the spring using the Start in Spring mod from uh, FSG Modding, um, just to bring a little bit of change to it. But here's the plan behind this. Here's the idea. Basically, as you can see, maybe it's been given away already by the little intro there. Um, but we are going to be running old machinery. I, originally, I was going to call this series Decades, Farming Simulator Decades. But I kind of thought we're limited, particularly in the older stuff, to get it accurate for decades. So, um, you know, I don't want to be using some stuff from the 1970s and the 60s um, and so on and so forth. And I know, crikey, <laughs> you guys would call me out for that. So the reality is, if I call it... it if I call it generations, it can run over a course of a few decades, 70s, 80s, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, or you know, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and so on and so forth. So um, that's the way we're going to play it. We can't always be super accurate, but we're going to try and do our best where we can, where mods are available. And of course, I'd love to hear from you guys. If you've seen mods out there, make sure they're legit and not bad converts or anything. But if you see any mods out there that you think would fit the bill for this series as we work our way through it, uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So, um, new series. The first thing you've got to do is do a bit of a vehicle tour, haven't you? So, uh, let's have a look. You saw that John Deere Lands Combine. Now, um, I'm kind of playing in the... That, I get that's a little bit older. But I'm kind of playing in the 60s, 70s kind of era at the moment obviously i'll uh, take that with a pinch of salt if you see something that isn't really fit in there and some of these are older so if you can assume that this is a farm where they've had the machinery already for a while as well we'll we'll just roll with that shall we but this lovely lands john deere combine any of these mods um that you see here will be from the mod hub and if they're not they will be listed in the description but i do love this obviously slightly older but uh, great looking combine there and we, you know what we're going to set ourselves a bit of a challenge as well we don't want to make this too easy to start with um and the old john deere baler there get that's a bit newer that's probably creeping into the 80s uh, maybe end of the 70s but um struggle to find anything baler like that was older than that um, over here, we've got uh, an international harvester truck. We're shipping our grain around. Obviously, our auger there as well. Probably a little bit too modern for our liking, but uh, um, limited again with options. And then we've got uh, a rather nice gravity wagon over there for when we are combining as well in the summer. But like I said, we're starting in Start in Spring using the Start in Spring mod. So we're not... Uh, going to be harvesting straight off the bat which is quite a nice change actually i think there's something when you start a new game the first thing you do is jump into a combine and get, get harvesting but uh, we're not going to do that we've got to decide which crops we want to plant and how we want to play things over the next few months so um we've got some bale storage there 
Um, now, we have got a mixture of old uh, equipment in here. Um, some of it European, because there wasn't any American options. But uh, we've got a, an old drill there. This very nice dry fertilizer spreader, which I really liked. So I'm pleased uh, that we found that. There's our grass equipment here. Some very old mowers, tedders and uh, windrowers there. They'll do the thing. We've got a weeder there. We've got a liquid fertilizer sprayer there. A very old cultivator there. A very old planter as well. So uh, as you can see, we're trying to be as uh, in keeping with the era as we can. And then here we've got the 710 John Deere. We have got the 4320 that came out just this week. And of course the Massey Ferguson and the Ferguson from the set that came out this week as well. I love these. To, uh, if you've not seen my old classic tractors vlog from uh, the start of the year um, I fell in love with these having seen them in real life and uh, I'm a big fan maybe one day I'll own one of those I'd love to do that but lovely tractors um, now what we are limited on here is horsepower I think these are both about 45 I think this is probably around about the same this is creeping up I think this is the 90 or 100 horsepower one so we have got a bit of drive in that but it's all small equipment each of these jobs are going to take a little bit of time to do so uh, yeah we've set ourselves a little bit of a challenge to start off with and i think the aim is as we grow through the series we build up a bit of money uh move into the kind of newer generations we'll add more equipment and we'll build things up from there and really take it on let's just go on a little bit of a journey of the last 50 years shall we and uh, see where we get to so let's jump into the map let's have a look at what we own at the moment and um then we'll have a decision as to what we're going to plant. So there we go. The beautiful Edgewater Saskatchewan map by South Sask and BC Bueller. I know a lot of you are playing this. I know there's a lot of series already. But I just thought, feel size-wise, and uh, just the general feel of the map really worked for this series. Now, I was also thinking, again, love to hear in the comments what you think, but maybe as we move through the generations, we move through different maps as well and try different maps. So um, we might not do the entire series on, on Edgewater. Um, again, let me know if you think that's a nice idea and we'll try and implement some of those things as well. But here we are. Um, as you can see, there is our uh, little farmyard. We've only got three fields at the moment, 14, 15, and 16 relatively small fields, which match our equipment. But we may be open to buying some more as we move through the series, uh, if we feel like we're making progress and things are working. So um, we've, got, we've also got this grass field up here, which is going to come in very handy, because one of the first things I'd like to do before uh, we buy our cows is to make sure that we have got enough feed in for them. So... Actually, even prior to planting these fields, and maybe it's something we can discuss while we're doing it, but we're going to go up here and we're going to get this grass cut and uh, windrowed and baled down into hay bales. So we're starting to get the constituent parts of our uh, feed for the cattle. Uh, the other thing we need to do as well is um, get some silage. So potentially one of these fields, you know, maybe 16, which is sitting in a ploughed state there, Maybe we should get some grass seed in there and get another field of grass going. And uh, then we can start to get that into the fermenting silo and uh, turned into silage again, taking us a couple of steps closer to having our TMR ready. So I guess that doesn't leave anything more than to uh, jump in a tractor and go and start doing some work. Right, there's our mower. It's not particularly attractive or big. Um, Let's just jump in actually and have a look at it because I need to check the horsepower on it as well. Um, 15. Right, we're laughing with this. But it does mean we can take one of the old Fergusons, which is nice. Don't need anything more substantial than that. And these sound lovely. Let's get this hooked up. Let's head over to the field and uh, get started with the jobs. Now there's our little stave silo, which will work as our fermenting silo, so very handily, right next to us in this field here. Um, but we need to run around this field, get this all sorted, we dive back in with the other equipment. So, 
I guess there's nothing more to do than say sit back relax and enjoy a little bit of a montage doing a killer job there i think we'll leave him to it we'll put a worker on that and we will take a stroll back to the yard and i think we'll set up the drill actually because i think we're going to need more grass than that this is our cow pen here uh, all ready to receive some animals as soon as we've got some food so what i want to do is get some more um, grass in the ground we can get that converted to silage and into that um into that silo so um i'm going to take the biggest tractor we've got here probably and uh get some seed in it and get it planting in one of the other fields right let's grab the cedar at the end here it's so nice to see so many nice old tractors appearing in the mod hub this week gotta say this is an absolute beauty as are those masses so let's grab this let's go over we have got some seed in our shed over by the uh, lands combine so we'll go and grab that and uh, we'll get everything filled up now one thing that's worth noting as well i'm not running precision farming because they didn't really have that kind of tech back in those days so we're uh, we're going old school just going on uh, gut feel i and whatever knowledge we've picked up along the way uh, later episodes I'm sure as we move through the decades we'll drop some precision farming in but for now we are going off our gut anyway let's get some seed there we go full of seed now of course this is not a direct drill seeder so we can't do anything in these two fields we do have a little cultivator though so we can use that again maybe we'll get another another tractor running in one of these fields as well um i'm gonna get through the jobs as quickly as we can but uh, let's get this down to the field let's get it started planting and hopefully by that time the mower's going to be nearly finished and we can get in there and uh start tedding that we're going to turn that first field up at the top there into hay bales i think the grass that we get off this one can be silage so let's crack on and see how we do well i should have checked this before i headed to the field we can't plant grass in march with the custom calendar that is in edgewater saskatchewan um i just wrongly assumed we could plant grass all year round so we're gonna to have to wait a month but that is okay because it isn't that far away and in the meantime we can do some of the field prep in these other two fields so all is not lost so let's head back to the yard let's get rid of this and uh, at least it's filled up and ready and uh, we can uh, get started on these two fields silly me there we go drill returned now i'm going to check our cultivator and what kind of horsepower that needs 28 horsepower so this is probably a little bit overkill so we'll maybe take the smaller john deere and go and cultivate those two fields so we'll just ditch this back here power it down and then attempt to get in to this looking good 
Okay. Let's pick up the little cultivator that's just here and head back. Now, there's something cool about this tractor. This is the one that was released after FarmCon uh, last year. And what's cool about it is I've actually seen the very tractor that they scanned for the model in-game. In fact, it was taken for a spin around the factory roads by our tour guide at the time. So, uh, in fact, I'll throw a little bit of a vid up here now so you can see it in action. A uh, beautiful tractor and, uh, yeah, still a very memorable day, that trip around the John Deere uh, Museum. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful setup. And uh, if you ever get the chance... Um, to go and see it. I strongly recommend you do. Right, let's get this unfolded. And let's get some work done. And there we go. That didn't take long, did it? That was quite good fun. And we have a field prepped. So with that going as well as it did, I think we're just going to jump straight over into the next field. And get started on that one too. Much bigger field, of course. Um, we'll do the borders. So that uh, we can put a worker on here with not too many issues. Let's drop it down and get things started. So there we go, we have set another worker off to sort that field, that bigger field out. Um, didn't take long at all that one, so hopefully this one won't take long either. It's got some speed on it, that tractor. So uh, there's obviously a little bit of power there left with that in the ground, but it's uh, going well. So while those are running, let's go back and check our uh, mower. He must be almost finished in the field now. Here we are, and indeed we have, looks like he's got a couple of passes left, not much more than that, which is fantastic. So, with that in mind, I'm just going to go and get the other tractor, and bring the tether over straight away. Now we do have a low loader on this tractor, which may come in handy once we've got our bales ready and we need to be making TMR, I've yet to find an appropriate mixing wagon for TMR, so we might have to think of a different way of doing it, but uh, let's get this hooked up. Very small. A windrow is a bit bigger, so that should give us some nice rows. But uh, yes, this is relatively small. But then again, everything on this farm is small at the moment. Okay. Let's run around here. We're going to have to do a couple of headlands, so I do know it's probably enough space if we just clever and avoid him to get a couple of headlands done and just avoid running into him but after that we're on our own so lower it down I've said it numerous times before but this uh, animation the tethers is so good. It's throwing this a long way out, so we might need to just be mindful about where this is landing when we're uh, doing the wind right. It seems to be spreading it quite wide. We'll run right up against the fence when we've got the wind rower on and make sure we get it all. I don't want to be wasting crop if we don't have to. But, uh, this is going well, running quite smoothly. Right, let's get these headlands done. And then we'll see where we are after that. 
Right, we're off and running. We'll swap over to a worker on this any second now, as the mower looks like it's just about to finish. So uh, we'll go and get that off the field and probably come back with a windrower pretty quickly. So let's uh, just leave this to it and uh, hopefully we'll just crack on with the job. That's enough of watching them. Let's run this back, get it parked up, and then it's back with the wind rower. But I think, probably, we're at the point where we could end it for this episode. So if you are enjoying this, do let me know in the comments below. Um, I'm interested to see where this one goes, actually. This could be a lot of fun. So, yes, if you like this, and you'd like to see more of this, do let me know, and... Uh, other than that, I will see you again very soon. Thank you very, very much for watching. It is always appreciated, and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.